Trading futures and options on futures involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all traders and investors. Oftentimes in futures trading, you have a high combination of leverage and volatility. And although this could be an equation for opportunity, it's also an equation for risk. So be careful, only fund your futures trading account with risk capital. My personal definition of risk capital is money I could afford to lose doesn't change my lifestyle or overly stress me out. As human beings, we make bad decisions when we're under stress, so be in a good spot. Remember, micro contracts could be friends. Take it easy on the day trade margins. You get plenty of leverage without maxing out on those day trade margins on a regular basis. We'll be taking a look at a real-time simulated live Ninja Trader trading platform today, and none of this should be construed as trade or investment advice. Past performance not indicative of future results. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Ninja Trader Platforms Unleashed. My name is Jim Cagnino with Ninja Trader. It is uh, November 13th, 2023. Happy Monday. Appreciate everybody being here with me uh, today. And if you've been following the series, you know Ninja Trader Platforms Unleashed showcases the three different trading methods or trading platforms that uh, we offer customers are all integrated together. So if you do something on one device, you see it somewhere else. We have the PC version, the award-winning PC version, which is you download it to a, to a, to a PC. And then there is the, um, the web-based application where you could log in on a, on a browser, right? Uh, on a Chrome browser, or any browser for that matter. And you could trade through the web-based platform. And then we have the mobile application, uh, which is particularly handy for a cell phone, whether you're using a, I don't know, an, an Apple iPhone or, or I guess they still call the other ones Androids as a category. Maybe there's another category of, uh, of, of cell phone I don't know about. But in any event, um, that's what we're going to talk about today. The mobile app, you download the mobile app, and then you could go ahead and monitor the markets and trade um, on your phone. And it's particularly helpful, and I'll be honest with you, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, how do you trade on a cell phone? Well, it's particularly helpful for, for several different reasons. As an example, last night, Sunday night, you know, I was watching football. I was comfortable on my couch. It was Sunday night. And I was, you know, getting rest, getting ready for the next, uh, uh, for Monday, for today. And I had my cell phone in my hand. So what did I do? I logged into my my Ninja Trader account, and I was monitoring the markets. I was monitor watching the open of the key markets that I'm looking for. So that's that's kind of number one. And number two, quite frankly, you know, we, we travel around a lot, right? And it might be good to place a trade now and then, uh, and sometimes more than now and then on the mobile app. So let's take a peek at it uh, today. Joining me behind the scenes, we have uh, Ed Jerkin. Ed is my colleague. Um, at Ninja Trader, uh, long term uh, 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 <clears throat> professional Ninja Trader, and knows more about all things in Ninja, Ninja Trader than anybody else I know. So feel free to um, type in any kind of questions, comments, observations you might have about anything Ninja related, and that'll be there for you uh, to help you uh, guide you to an answer. All right. Well, let's take a look. All right. So I, I'm I'm working off my cell phone now. I have it I have it mirrored here somehow onto the Zoom meeting. Uh, this uh, uh, through the through the miracle of the greatness of mission control here and Jason, we're able to broadcast from my cell phone to you guys. So let's take a peek here right now. Let's let's start with the menu. The upper left corner here. There's a there's a hamburger. Right. These three lines. I'm going to click on it. And it's going to open up a menu. And this is my menu system, how I could toggle around between different areas within the app. It's really easy. Just tap it and go. The top left is my, is my account. It's CAGS1210. That's the name of my demo account. And there's my demo account. Um, there's my demo account uh, number up there. It's real-time streaming uh, that I get on, uh, on, on, on the phone. And again, last night was great. I logged in. I got to watch the open and kind of get the the flavor for what to expect today. And it was fantastic. So there's, let's go below it though. There's several different things here. There's, we could add a market list. Uh, there's balance sheet. We're going to go through all of these. So just let me just kind of read them real quick. Trade, uh, you could take a peek at your orders, whether they're working, canceled, rejected, filled, whatever they are. Notifications, news, great news feed here. Reports, achievements, settings, and share. I'm going to go all the way down and start with settings. Let's click on settings right now. And we'll have um, a menu that pops up and it gives you a bunch of stuff, right? There's personal details, there's documents. Again, I'm in a real-time demo account right now, so I don't have live, live account to share with through the document section. 
But this is a this is the biggest tip, one of the biggest tips of the day, the theme. Now I found, now I'm a little bit older than probably everybody here. So just keep that in mind. But I found the dark theme is way easier to see and to use than the light theme. So I have mine set to dark. You could change it to whatever you want, right? But that's how I have mine set. And then this is, you know, bank account information, transfer history. Uh, security is really important. Biometric authentication, I have checked. Uh, you could do two-factor authentication uh, as well if you want to get that second, you know, text or, or email saying, hey, you sure, is this you? As kind of a security measure, it's pretty good. And there's trusted devices section as well. Um, and there's some general information here on social media and about support. And then scrolling down a little bit, and I'm just scrolling with my finger, right? I'm just moving this up with my finger. Um, and then we could set times um, and other notifications to tell us stuff like order statuses, um, session hour reminders, news, and position monitoring. So, you know, we're not going to go into detail on that. It, there's pretty self-explanatory. You just toggle on or toggle off. It's kind of what you're interested in. Push notifications. Um, these are, uh, you know, I have everything checked. I want to see everything. But you, again, you could uncheck some of these things if they're not important to you. So I have push notifications on. Um, and then the, the arrows on the top just kind of goes back to the main menu. So let's shoot back to the main menu. Well, this actually takes me back to where I started from. And this is my, um, these are the, this is the markets tab, right? And in the markets tab, I have all my charts, right? I have my charts um, and I have my charts set up according to categories. In the upper left, you know, we have the uh, asset class, if you will, financials, micros, cryptos, currency futures, energies, indices. We're on indices right now, stocks, metals, grains, meats, softs, and then my positions. So we have all of these um, header categories uh, that you could take a shortcut to just by clicking on it, and it'll bring up that group that you've, had, you've added to the actual uh, list. And it's easy to add to a list. I'll just go back to indicators, uh, indices, and you see that little plus sign at the bottom. You click on the plus sign there, and then you could type in a symbol. It'll look up the symbol for you, and you could add it to that particular section within the... Um, within the category you're interested in. So again, this is the stock index futures. I already have e mini S&P, the Dow, the micro NASDAQ, and the Russell. And, and I even have the, 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 um, the micro e mini S&P at the bottom here. So it's really easy to do that. Just hit that plus button here. Let's say I wanted to do YMY for the, you know, we'll call it the, um, the micro um, uh, Dow. And oops, sorry, I'm going to check the December one. And I'm going to go ahead and click that check button. And it's going to add it to my list. It'll add it to the bottom of the list. And there it is. So that's that's how you would add a, uh, a, uh, a market or an instrument, depending on, you know, what you call them. Instruments, market, same thing. That little plus button on the lower right-hand side. So that's pretty convenient. Now, we could, I could click on the trade button on the left in any, uh, any chart or this expansion button. But before I demonstrate that, just let's go through the rest of the actual menu. So I'm gonna hit the menu button again. It's gonna bring it up. So now I have a, the very first thing, I have this thing called balance sheet. I'm gonna click on that. And again, again, there's a series of tabs on the top, right? And it shows me my positions for today. I'm flat in the E-mini S&P, and then it gives me some details with the drop down menu uh, that actually has some quotes uh, associated with that but then I could expand or contract that by just tapping on that little carrot on the right-hand side. And, you know, it gives me some, some P&L information. Um, the NASDAQ here, micro NASDAQ, it says plus one at a price of 576 and a quarter. So I'm long one contract right now. And my open P&L, my unrealized gross P&L on the right-hand side is moving around as the market moves around. You can see it's minus $24. We're going to have to fix that somehow, some way. The Russell... Um, again, I, that was flat. That trade's done, right? So that's good. Now, there's a cancel and exit all button here as well, that blue button here. If I click on that blue button, what it's going to do, it's going to cancel all my working orders and it's going to flatten my position in the micro NASDAQ. I don't want to do that just yet. So we'll kind of leave it there for now. Um, and then there's some other uh, auto liquidation at the top. I could go ahead and set, make some settings for liquidation policy based on my personal preference. Um, we have, um, those are the two most important uh, pieces of information. The value button up here, demo value. You'll have your account name and the value at the top. And they'll give you all sorts of information. You can kind of scroll down and look at your mar what your margin situation is, um, what your uh, open uh, P&L is, what your realized P&L is, 
what your total uh, net liquidation value is. And this is kind of, this is your account level information, right? This is unique to you. Um, and that's where that piece of information is. Again, you can go back to the menu though. Um, and then you can go and you can kind of toggle real easily between all of this type of information. Um, so we already checked out the markets. There's a trade button here. That's an old fashioned trade ticket, right? Old fashioned trade ticket where you select your, uh, your, your market at the top. Um, and then you would um, go ahead and decide if you're going to go long or short, set your quantity. Do you want a market order? Good till day. Do you want to set a profit target right away? You could do that if you watch just by clicking on that toggle button that I just clicked on. I know you can't see my finger, but I'm going to go ahead and we'll make it, I don't know, we'll make it uh, uh, 12 ticks. Don't follow along at home. This is just kind of a random demonstration. And then um, let's add a stop loss at this point. So it'll behave like a bracket. Then we'll make that 10 ticks. Just kind of drag it there, 10 ticks. And then I could hit the send button and it would send this to send this uh, order in. And then here's kind of my, my order number, my ticket number with all the information associated with the bracket that I just put in. And that's in micro crude. We'll let that go. We'll let that go. We'll check on it later. Um, let's go back here to the rest, to the main menu and see what else we have there. We have this thing called uh, balance sheet. And that gives me, I think we already talked about that, but I want to see my positions right now because I just added a position. So I want to click on that position button again, and I'm going to look at, all right, there it is. There's my micro crude oil trade right there. Um, uh, my open P&L is, is minus $4. It's red. It's color coded. So we know what that what that's all about. And then again, I got that cancel uh, and exit. My micro NASDAQ's really going against me right now. Let's go back and check out that micro NASDAQ. I'm going to go to markets, and then I'm going to uh, scroll down until I find it. Now, there's a couple of things I could do here. I'm gonna click, I can, I'm gonna click on the actual uh, MNQ December, 2023 uh, symbol at the, at the top left. And by clicking on that, it opens up a trade ladder, right? And this, you know, you scroll with your finger. It doesn't get any, any more complicated than that. You scroll up or down with your finger. And again, it's giving me all the information associated with my micro NASDAQ trade. I'm, my, I'm long one contract. It gives me my average price at the top at five seventy six and a quarter, right? My op my 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 open uh, PL. Now, what I'm going to do in this particular case is I'm going to go ahead and buy another contract, right? I could do it by hitting that market button, by market button at lower left hand button on the uh, on the bottom. It's green, or I could select a price. I'm going to go ahead and just pick a price at five forty four. I'm going to hold it down once. I'm going to click again. It's a double click action, and I've placed an order. I placed a limit order to buy one contract at 15, 50, uh, 15, 544 even. If the market goes down there, we'll get filled and which we just did. So now I've got a second unit, like I'm long two micro NASDAQs right now. And um, you know, it's it shows it up on the top under positions. This is plus two uh, at the top. So I know that's exactly what I am. And now let's say I wanted to place some a profit target somewhere above the market. Again, I could scroll to a number, and again, don't I'm just don't don't follow along, but I'm just going to click randomly at 557, double click, and it'll add that order there. Right now, if you want to modify that order, you could do it. You could just click on it again, and it pops up this little menu underneath. I could cancel that order. I could bring it down a tick, um, or I could bring it up a tick, or I could just hold down the actual button. Bear with me a second here. And oh, sorry about that. That was that was my bad. I'm using my fingers here, folks, which is really, really one of these things where once you get it down, you get used to it. So I'm now I'm going to drag it. I selected it. I'm going to drag it to a different place and I'm going to double click where I want it to be. And I just cancel and replace that with my finger. So it's really easy to do. And you can see it there now at 56 and, uh, and a quarter. And at the bottom, notice I still have all the controls. I still could buy another at the market. I could sell one at the market. I could cancel all and exit if I like, if I just don't like the position. By canceling all and exiting, what it will do is it'll cancel all my working orders and, and, and create a flat position for me. In this case, it would sell two contracts uh, at the market and I would be out. Let's go back to the hamburger, my main menu. Um, let's see, where, what did we not talk about? I don't, let's go to orders. This is a really important tab right here. Um, I have all, all my orders are selected right now, right? All of my orders are selected right now. And I can see, uh, you know, 
whether I whether I canceled them or they were filled or they were rejected or whatever it was, I could, this is everything I've done today in this session. If I just want to see the orders that are working in the order book, in other words, you know, orders that are still going uh, that have not been filled yet, I'll just click on that second tab that says working. And in here, it shows me all of my working orders. I have several still, right? I have two units. Uh, I have one. Hang on, where am I at here? Right, so I have one uh, uh, one cell order for the micro NASDAQ. I have that bracket for the crude oil. I have um, long one, I'm trying to buy one crude oil, a uh, classic crude oil, a big CL, not an MCL, but a big CL at 75.29. That was an order from this morning, a long time ago. And then um, I also have, uh, you know, I'm trying to buy one Dow December 2023 contract at 34. Um, uh, 20 to, to a one. And I could hit that drop down arrow again on the right hand side. Remember, there's a lot of arrows, a lot of like that. That's, that's a signal to say, hey, this is going to open up a new menu. And then there's that menu, right? There's that menu. And it's opening up this little window here under working where I could actually modify my order or I could cancel it or I can go right to the trading ladder, which is this thing here. That little, uh, the four arrows, you know, that the four arrows going to the corners of the square, that'll shoot you back here to your trading ladder where you could also modify or add to or subtract from uh, orders as well. So um, hopefully that's uh, pretty intuitive and pretty easy to kind of understand. And you can see on the trading ladder here, we have the green side is the buy side, right? This is where you wanna place your buy orders, whether it's a buy, it's a, a limit order to buy uh, entry order or it's a uh, profit target order. And also you can place your stop losses here, right? Remember stops are, are gonna be the opposite direction as limit orders. On the right-hand side is the cell column, right? On the right-hand side is the cell column. And um, again, you could, do, you could do the same thing. You could, you could place your limit orders uh, above the market somewhere. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna throw one in randomly, double click. And you can see my little label there, cell one at uh, 34,443. And then I could put a stop loss below the market. Same thing, I'm just gonna touch, touch in the buy column at, uh, with my finger. It'll pop up that ticket. Sell one, trail stop, I'm gonna hit again, and then it'll, it'll send it in. So that's really, really how, we, how, how, how nimble it is to actually trade these things. And that's not even using the market order buttons. You could use the market order buttons down below um, and um, you instantly place a trade, right? So it's pretty convenient. The, the, the ladder is pretty good because you can scroll with your finger as high up as you want. And look at it, it even shows the high of the session is 34, 461, right? You can see it right there on the left-hand side in the buy column. And the same thing is going to be true at the, at the bottom if I, go, if I go low enough, right? If I go low enough way down here. So again, I would experiment with this uh, particular trading ladder or depth of market dome, whatever you want to call it, uh, in sim mode first. Make sure you get you know the feel for how it all works. If you haven't traded from a phone app before, um, you know, a lot of folks really, you know, the conventional wisdom is, Oh, these these trading ladders you can't really use on a cell phone. But I I, I would say that's not true. I, I would say this is pretty pretty functional and pretty easy for me to use it. You know, whether it's my primary trading method or it's a backup method or it's uh, hey I'm at you know I'm at the beach and I want to make a trade. This is uh this this is perfectly uh perfectly usable and it's really a user friendly format um, for sure. So um, one thing I don't have is my cheat sheet here. Hang on a second, everybody. Let me catch myself up and uh, bear with me. Um, I don't have my, my, um, my connection to mission control set up, but I'm gonna do that right now on the fly. Bear with me, everybody. All right, we're good there. Again, Ed Jerkin is with me today. Ed, long-term Ninja Trader employee. Um, feel free to pop in and say hi to him. If you don't know where the chat is, um, you know, I don't know, maybe you're watching on YouTube or something, you don't know where the chat is, go to ninjatrader.com forward slash events, E-V-E-N-T-S, ninjatrader.com forward slash events, and then you could join the chat, right? You create a username or, I'm sorry, you create a, 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 a chat name, Right, a nickname or your full name or however you want to be known as, you don't have to register. You don't have to surrender an email address. You don't have to do any of that. All you do is just create a handle and then you're in. And that way it gives you access to Ed who could answer just about, I think, any question uh, in the universe. And not only that, 
he could put, push questions to me too, if it's relevant to what we're talking about. If it's not relevant, if it's something regarding the, um, uh, some other aspect of Ninja Trader, that is there for you guys. So feel free to pop in. It's a unique opportunity to have Mr. Jerkin with us today. Appreciate his uh, contribution. So I'm going to go back and see what else, what other kinds of stuff I could show you here. Um, so I'm going to go back to the main menu and you can see here at the top, because now that we're in the trade ladder area, um, it says show buy sell market. I have that selected, right? And that's, and that's these buy, this at the bottom, buy and sell markets. That's what, that's what that's showing. If I go back to the main menu, I could also show bid, join bid, join offer as well. I just hit, I just hit that button. It just, it's just a toggle on and off. Let's go back to the trading ladder. And you can see it added a second uh, line down at the bottom, join bid, reverse, join ask, right? And if you don't know what that is, join, so when you, if, let's just talk about market order really quickly. A market order is going to give you the best available price um, as, as fast as possible. And usually if you're buying on the market, you're going to, you, you'll receive, you will, you will do a transaction, you will receive you will buy one, but it will be at the lowest offer, right? The lowest offer on the right-hand side, the lowest price someone's willing to sell it to you. Same thing with the sell market, only in reverse. If you hit that sell market button, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you the best available price, which is the highest green level there too. So sometimes when the market's moving, you can get slippage and you could have, you know, maybe you're going to lose a tick or two in your entry. So by joining the bid, though, let's go to the green the green button called go, join the bid. Then it's going to put it's going to put a limit order in at the highest uh, at the highest uh, bid price, right? The highest green you can see on the left hand side. If you join the ask or the offer, it's going to do the opposite. It's going to put a, a limit order in to sell a contract for you at the lowest price on the on 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 the sell side. Uh, you know the red column there. And that's called join the bid, join the, join the ask. And that gets you as close to the last traded price as you could get. So some folks find that handy because sometimes it can maybe, in theory, you can save a tick getting in. Remember, that's $5 in this market. And the, and the Dow Jones that we're looking at right now, the Dow Jones futures market, that's a $5 tick. That's part of your transaction cost. So it's always kind of good to get uh, get in to the best price you can get into. Now, limit orders are a different matter, right? Limit orders are literally you're saying, "Hey, I I would like uh, I would like uh, to either buy or sell a contract at the price I specify or better." That's a definition of limit order. So let's just go up to thirty four four forty again. Again, I'm going to hit my I'm going to hit the column right on the right hand side to sell. That's 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 the sell side. And then it's going to give me this ticket, this confirmation. Hey, Jim, you want to sell one at 34, 440? I click again, and then it sends that order uh, to the order book. And so now I have it. And you can see it's working up there as well. And it's, it's, it's moving around. And remember, just click on that marker. By clicking on that marker, it's going to give you a shortcut, right? You could cancel it with that red X. You could tick it up a couple ticks. You could tick it down a couple ticks, you know, whatever you want. And then um, let it go. So now I have two orders in the order book right there, um, close to where we're at. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna select it again, and I'm just gonna hit that X button to cancel one of them, and we'll keep the 4443 one there and uh, let it go. Oh, boy, so it's really a handy a handy a handy uh, infra, uh, mobile app. I, I have to admit. Under enable brackets too, you could toggle that on as well, so that when you do place a trade, it'll automatically put a simple bracket around the trade. Remember, we set it up at we you could set it up however you want it actually, but that's how we set it up. And then you could go ahead and click on that uh, more trade preference uh, 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 a bu a button there, and it gives you again it gives you the ability to customize how you want the bracket. Right right now we have you know four and eight. You could just kind of use that uh, bar there and drag it across to a different level. Um, I have 16 and eight, um, or you could even set up an auto bracket, an uh, auto break even trigger down below. I have none set up right now, but again, I, I suggest you experiment with that a little bit. Um, good to cancel, otherwise expires at the end of the session. You could toggle that on or off and then use trailing stop newly placed orders. I'm gonna turn that one off. And then I'm going to, and that's it. There's no save button or anything like that. I'm going to go hit that backspace, backspace button. And we've changed those preferences accordingly. 
Now, if you want to learn more about a contract, you can click on that about uh, YM and it gives you a little piece of information, you know, what the tick size is, what the day trade margin is, what the full exchange margin is, what exchange is traded on, um, and the day it expires. Remember, futures, tra- futures contracts have an expiration. It's not like you can't trade the Dow futures after December 15th, but you will be trading the next forward month, which is the March contract. And there are the hours, five to four, 23 hour marketplace, hit okay, and we're good to go. If I ever wanna go back to my uh, my quote board or to my, my charts, I just click on that market uh, uh, menu item and I'm back to where I started from. If I wanna shrink some of this, there's a little carrot. Again, look for these little carrots on the right-hand side of the E-mini S&P chart and it'll, it'll make it, it'll shrink it. Maybe it's in the way, maybe you wanna focus on the Dow, you could shrink it. Maybe you wanna focus on the NASDAQ or you could expand it. It's really, really that easy. All right. Well, I think we covered a lot of ground right now. Um, I think we covered a lot of ground right now. We'll go back to um, orders really quickly. And just to kind of get a recap here, all orders here, are my all of my orders here. And then even with the orders that are already filled as an example or canceled, that drop down menu, that little carrot on the right hand side, you could click on it. It'll expand that window and it will give you information on that particular trade. Um, you know, when it was filled in particular might be helpful. Working orders. Remember, end of the day, you're not sure if you have any working orders. This is really handy. This is another big tip. At the end of the day, if you're not sure if you have any working orders, you could click on that working orders tab at the top of this view and hit cancel all. And by canceling it all, you, you won't have anything working anymore, right? So you could do that. You could look at filled as well. This gives you all the, all of your fills you could you know for to analyze at the end of the day and then here's the canceled orders orders that I've canceled already uh, today. All right, any questions? Type them into Ed. We're going to be wrapping it up here in a minute. Um, I don't think I talked about the news feed though, so I want to go back to the main menu. And remember, it's easy. There's this triple. There's the hamburger on the left, upper left. These three parallel lines. You click on that. It opens up. Um, this menu. I want to go to news. Let's look at the news. And it gives you a little snapshot, right, of the news, right? You can say, okay, there's BP Edison uh, shall ask US EU to intervene on something. Let's click on that. It gives me a little bit more information on the news feed. And there's many more stories here. And by clicking on any of these stories, you're going to go directly to uh, a web page with the whole story in it. And you can see we have a couple from investing.com at the top. RTT News is another one. This is particularly helpful, even if you're not trading. You want you just, you just want to look for news items related to the markets. Here's where you go. These are shortcuts uh, to um, industry um, news providers that are in the business of uh, getting traders news. So that's kind of a really uh, super handy thing. At the whole time now, I can see my YM position here. I'm short too. Um, on the Dow, the Dow is up 98 on the day. That is amazing. Everything's up except the NASI, micro NASDAQ. All right. Um, that's about it. I think we, oh, did we talk about the old fashioned trade ticket? See where it says trade? Click on that. This is an old fashioned trade ticket. So when I say old fashioned, you know, you could be kind of deliberate, right, in your trade um, by putting in, uh, and I have, you could turn off the, the bracket. So again, you just buy or sell quantity market order at the top left. It says the micro crude contract is there. Um, I could change it to a different market. I don't know. Let's change it to, um, we could change it to anything really. Let's change it to a 10 year note. We'll do that 10 year note market. And um, know, let's buy it. Let's go ahead and buy. Uh, we'll do a limit order, maybe limit order. And then you can specify your limit price here if you want. And uh, good for uh, the day. I'm going to keep it there. Um, again, we have that profit 12 and 10 up here for the bracket. Profit would be 12 ticks up. Uh, stop loss 10 ticks down. I could turn these off if I want just by toggling them. I could leave them on if I want. Or I could leave one of them on. We'll leave them both on and I'll hit the send button. And, and then it will send that order. It's really that easy. So um, again, if you're new to this mobile app, uh, download it and um, practice in sim mode, right? In simulated that you'll have, you'll be able to do it with your NinjaTrader account or whatever account you're using. 
Um, just go to sim. I can see it here, a demo account. And some people call it, some people call it simulated account. Some people call it paper trading. Uh, you know, it depends on how old you are <laughs> to be honest with you. But in any event, um, so that's pretty much it. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty slick. I must admit. Um, there's some reports down here at the bottom. We didn't really go over the reports. I can start a report and run a report, um, and download a report. Uh, as well. So for today or for whatever day, you can go back in time yesterday, this week, previous week, this month, whatever, however, whatever piece of information that you would like. And then you could simply just run the report and then it will uh, go ahead and provide you with a whole bunch of information, including performance information and um, past performance, not indicative of future results. I'm going to say that right here, right now. So, but let's take a peek. I have my net p &L. Right there's my net uh, PL. I have my number of trades, number of contracts. Uh, remember, in futures trading, we trade contracts, not shares. So that's why it's contracts. Um, we have my average trade time, longest trade time, uh, percent profitable trades, total fees and commissions, uh, total PL, and this pretty cool little graph here, um, which uh, may be helpful, maybe not. Uh, this is particularly helpful, by the way. I'll tell you this for sure. Um, when you're trading, in my experience, this is a side note, right? There's some times in the day that I'm better than other times in the day, right? And so by seeing this in this graph right here, that's particularly helpful, right? Maybe I'm really good pre-market, but I'm really bad during the open. Maybe I'm really good pre-market, I'm really bad end of day, right? You'll, you could kind of see it's color coded here. So it's really, really helpful throughout the course of the day to get these performance measures on a chart. And then here is uh, some loss summary, loss breakdown. This is really awesome. This thing is really awesome under performance. Timeline just kind of walks you through the history. Hit that arrow to the left. You're going to go back to the report section. You can review another report. Hit that uh, triple hamburger at the top left and you're back to the main menu. All right, well, we covered a lot of ground, folks. I hope uh, everyone found that useful. Remember, this is integrated with the other trading platforms, right? So one account, three different ways to trade, three ways to trade, super convenient. Maybe one of these three is your primary, the PC, the uh, browser-based, the web-based, or the mobile app, and the other one's a backup, however you want to handle it. You always have that backup, though. It's pretty good. You know, think about the cell phone. Your cell phone doesn't need Wi-Fi to run, right? Now I have mine on Wi-Fi, but it's because I'm I'm in my at my office. But um, it doesn't need it. So if your internet goes out, um, you got a method to get in and out. So it's very helpful for sure. So make sure you download that app. Um, having said all that, folks, greatly appreciate your time today on Ninja Trader Platforms Unleashed mobile app version. Next week we have another top. Next week, next week we don't have another topic. We're going to take a week off because Thanksgiving week, I'm going to be grateful. I am grateful. And then the week after that, we're going to finish strong. So keep that in mind as well. All right. Most important message of the day as usual, folks, please be safe out there. Be good to each other. See you soon.